Would you believe it? These idiots are wanting me to make them some wooden items. Me, of all people. Don't they know that I've got so many other better things that I need to be getting on with? If only there was a building with a rather crafty moron inside of it who could maybe be taught these wooden item recipes and save me having to make them. Well, seeing as you are a clever cookie after all and have already clicked onto this video, then you know too right that there is. In this tutorial, we'll cover the basics of this worker, explaining everything that you'll ever need to know about the Mine Colony's carpenter and sawmill. The carpenter and their sawmill are an essential part of the colony's production line. They will craft any item recipe for your colony that is made of at least 75% wood. This includes most standard 3x3 crafting grid wooden recipes, as well as special architect cutter wooden recipes. The only items that they can't make are items that include metal ingots, stone, redstone or string. These talented little carpenters can even create Mine Colony's specific blocks, such as compost barrels, placeholder blocks and racks. An absolute must build within your colony, should you wish to start automating it. In order to construct the sawmill, you will first need to unlock it within the university. The research required to unlock the building is the woodwork upgrade, which can be found within the technology branch. This research requires the colony having forester's huts totalling at least three levels and a stack of oak planks. You can achieve the requirement of the forester's huts totalling at least three levels in a few different ways. You can either have the one forester's hut upgraded to level three by itself, or you can have three level one forester huts which together will total the three levels, or you can have a combination of different forester hut levels so long as your combined levels total the three required. When the level and item requirements have been met, then the woodworking upgrade can be researched, which after a set amount of real time passes, the sawmill building will be unlocked for you to construct. The sawmill hut block can be crafted by using five wooden planks of any type, three wooden axes, and a build tool. The hut block will need to be within your inventory before using the build tool to place it. On versions 1.19 of Mine Colonies, the sawmill hut is classed as a carpentry build and can be found within the craftsmanship category. On older versions of Mine Colonies, the sawmill hut can be found within the top left drop down menu under the sawmill category. After construction, a carpenter will be assigned to the hut if it has been set to automatic hiring. The carpenter will not create any wooden items unless two specific criteria have been met. The first requires the sawmill to be taught the recipe of the item before the carpenter can create it. The second requires the taught item to be requested by either a worker within the colony or by yourself by making a request from a post box. Only when both conditions are met will the carpenter create any wooden item. There are some slight differences with how you teach the sawmill recipes depending on the version of Mine Colonies that you are using. Newer versions of the mod, ranging from versions 1.17 to 1.19, allows the sawmill to be taught two different types of recipes. They can be taught standard 3x3 crafting grid recipes, and they can be taught special domum ornamentum recipes, which are architect cutter recipes. For the older 1.16 version of Mine Colonies, the sawmill can only be taught standard 3x3 crafting grid recipes, as this version does not support the domum ornamentum mod. To try streamline this tutorial, I will be focusing more on the newer versions of Mine Colonies and how to teach the sawmill recipes within them. The principles discussed, however, will still work with the older 1.16 version, but there will be significant recipe differences, which we will briefly discuss. 
The standard crafting grid recipes can be taught through the crafting recipes tab of the sawmills interface by pressing the teach recipe option on the bottom of the tab. This opens up a crafting grid for the sawmill, which you can then drag blocks from your inventory up into, which generates the recipe that you want them to make. If the recipe was entered correctly, then the item will appear within the output box, which if you then selected the done option, the recipe would be taught and saved to the sawmill's recipe list. A successful bell chime will ring if that recipe that you are trying to teach can be taught to the sawmill, the chime sounds like this. An error sound will play if the recipe that you are trying to teach cannot be taught to the sawmill. The error sounds like this. All successful recipes taught to the sawmill this way can be found within the Crafting Recipes tab's list of recipes. Architect Cutter Recipes can be taught through the Custom Recipes tab of the sawmill's interface by pressing the Teach Recipe option on the bottom of the tab. This opens up the architect's cutter crafting grid for the sawmill, which requires you to enter free inputs depending on the recipe that you're trying to teach. On a normal architect's cutter, you will have three blank squares on the top left of the interface. These three squares correspond to the free inputs within the sawmill's crafting grid. The top left slot of the cutter is the input 1 option within the crafting grid. The top right slot is the input 2 option. The bottom left slot is the input 3 option. The first slot and input 1 option are for the main material of the recipe. The second slot and input 2 option are for the supporting material of the recipe. The third slot and input 3 option are for the covering material of the recipe. To add materials into any of the input options of the sawmill's crafting grid, you will need to press the switch button beside the desired input. This opens up a new menu, which allows you to search for the desired block. Once a block has been found, you can finalise it by pressing the select button and then the green tick button. This will return you to the previous menu and a list will be generated of all of the different block variations that the sawmill can learn from that input. You can add different blocks to the other inputs to generate more complicated recipes by repeating these steps for the other inputs. Once happy with the recipe that you have created, you can press the teach option which will teach and save all of the variations shown to the sawmill. The success bell or error sound will play depending if the sawmill can be taught the recipe or not. The sawmill will learn all of the recipes generated within that list for the input options chosen, so you won't need to teach each one individually. You can see a list of all taught recipes within the custom recipes tabs list of recipes. In version 1.19 of Mine Colony specifically, within the Architect Cutter Recipes menu of the Custom Recipes tab, there is a small option beside the inputs called Requests. Pressing this option will open up a list of all of the current wooden requests for Architect Cutter Recipes that the colony is currently asking for. You can select on any recipe that appears here, which will automatically populate the correct blocks into the inputs. This is just a much simpler way to teach these forms of recipes to the sawmill, although at the time of recording, this option is only available on versions 1.19 of Mine Colonies. In version 1.16 of Mine Colonies, the sawmill can learn how to make the structurized special blocks that many of the builds require. These blocks are almost identical to the Domum Ornamentum blocks, but do have a significantly different crafting recipe, which only involves using a 3x3 crafting grid. The recipe of these types of blocks normally start off with a wooden plank of some type on the top, followed by another block type underneath in the middle, then finally the build tool on the bottom. This is the base crafting recipe of these types of blocks, and the recipe for them will normally output a vertical variation of the block. 
This vertical variation can then be changed into other variations of the block by putting it back into a crafting grid which will output a different form to the vertical one. You can then cycle through all of these different variations by placing the newly crafted block back into the crafting grid again until eventually you end up with the correct variation of the block that you wished to craft. As complicated as this process may seem on the face of it, the sum unfortunately has a much simpler way to be taught these recipes. You will only need to teach the base crafting recipe of the block that you are trying to make. So, for example, let's say that you wanted to teach the recipe for crossed oak paper timber frames, which normally would require a few crafting cycles to make, you would only need to teach the sawmill the recipe shown here, with an oak plank on top, a piece of paper in the centre, and a build tool on the bottom. This recipe will output the vertical variant of the block, but the carpenter would be able to make the crossed variant from it, as this base recipe covers all variations of the block. You can see this by the fact the block variations cycle within the list of recipes for a single taught recipe. The sawmill can also be taught different recipes from other mods that you may have installed. I have the Oh the Biomes You'll Go mod installed on most of my playthroughs, and the sawmill can learn a lot of wooden recipes from the modded blocks within it. The sawmills can also make changes to recipes depending on any data packs that you may have installed. I use Vanilla Tweaks data packs to get more items out from recipes, which the sawmills can be simply taught these adapted recipes as normal. Just remember that any recipe that you do teach to a sawmill must be at least made of 75% wood and must not contain any metal ingots, stone, redstone or string. The carpenter will only make items that have been taught to the sawmill once a request for the item comes in. When a request for an item has been made, the carpenter will then make a request of their own for all of the materials that they require to craft it. The delivery system, or yourself, will need to supply the sawmill with all of the materials required to create the requested items. Once the carpenter receives in their materials, they will then craft any requested items and store them within their huts building for either a courier or yourself to then come and collect for delivery. The sawmill only has so many recipe slots in which recipes can be taught and saved to. Each upgrade to the sawmill will double the amount of recipe slots that it can have. At level 1, they will only have 10 recipe slots. At level 2, they will have 20 recipe slots. All the way to level 5, where they will have up to 160 recipe slots. The amount of recipe slots that the sawmill can have can also be upgraded by unlocking specific researches within the university. Starting with the memory aid research, there is an entire branch dedicated to unlocking more recipe slots for all of the buildings within the colony, including the sawmill. These upgrades usually require you having a set amount of sawmill total levels within the colony, alongside paper to unlock them. On the topic of research, a level 1 sawmill is required for the string work upgrade within the university, which unlocks the Fletcher Sut. You can teach multiple recipes that make the same item to the sawmill, but you cannot teach it duplicate recipes. So you could teach it how to make chests using different planks, and it will save each new taught recipe within one of its recipe slots. But if you try to teach an already known recipe again, the sawmill would still accept the recipe if it was correct, but it would not use up any additional recipe slots for it, as it already has the recipe saved previously. The carpenter has a chance to decrease the amount of materials required to create an item whenever they craft that item for requests. You will get a message up in your chat box letting you know when and how the carpenter has improved an item's recipe. The improved recipe can be viewed within the sawmill's recipe list 
and the carpenter will then always craft that item using their improved recipe. If you do not like the improved recipe, you can disable it by pressing the disable option within the sawmill's recipe list. Or you can remove the recipe entirely by pressing the remove option. Any removed recipe can be retaught back to the sawmill at any time. The carpenter uses the knowledge skill as their primary trait, where they will level it up as they continue to work. A higher level in this skill will increase the chance for them to decrease the amount of materials required for a recipe. They use a dexterity skill as their secondary trait, where they will also level this up as they continue to work. A higher level in this skill will allow them to craft their items faster. Now if you're anything like me, then you may find that using the architect's cutter can be quite confusing. Never mind now having to remember which inputs from the sawmill's interface correspond to what slot from the cutter. So for the following section, we will take a few recipe examples and work our way through how the architect cutter works and how it would then work within the sawmill's crafting grid. Let's say that we wanted to make this round oak planks pillar block. The recipe for it, unlike the name of it, is incredibly simple, just requiring a main material of oak planks. On the architect's cutter, the first slot is where the main material of the recipe will go, which for this example will be the oak planks. A list of all the variations that can be made from the block will appear within the centre with the round oak planks pillar being the first on the list, which can then be selected and crafted. Within the sawmill's crafting grid, input 1 corresponds to the first slot of the architect's cutter and is used as the main material of the recipe. If oak planks are selected for the input, the same list of all variations will be generated, with the round oak planks pillar being again first on the list. Pressing the Teach option will allow the sawmill to learn all of the variations from that generated list, including the pillar block. Let's add a second block into the recipe now and make this brick extra shingle. The recipe for it requires a main material of brick extra supported by oak planks. On the cutter, the first slot is where the main brick extra block will go with the second slot being where the supporting oak planks will go. The brick extra shingles will then be generated within the list to craft from. Within the sawmill's crafting grid, input 1 will be the main material of the recipe, which will be the brick extra, and input 2 will correspond to the second slot of the cutter, and will be the supporting material of the recipe, which will be the oak planks. Again, the brick extra shingles will be generated within the list to be taught to the sawmill. Let's now add a third block into the recipe and make another form of brick extra shingles. The recipe for it requires a main material of brick extra, supported by oak planks, then covered by some more brick extra. On the cutter, the first slot is where the main brick extra block will go. The second slot is where the supporting oak planks will go, and the third bottom slot is where the last covering brick extra block will go. By adding the third block, even more variations will be generated, including the brick extra shingles that we desire. Within the sawmill's crafting grid, input 1 will be the main material of the recipe, which will be the brick extra. Input 2 will be the supporting material of the recipe, which will be the oak planks, and input 3 will correspond to the third slot of the cutter and will be the covering material of the recipe, which will be another brick extra. This will generate the desired shingle blocks within the list, which we once again can teach to the sawmill. We will do one final example of an architect's cutter recipe, and this time create some nice double crossed framed paper extra blocks. That is a mouthful to say, let me tell you that. The recipe for these framed blocks are laid out and worded slightly differently to the shingles, but ultimately it's the same steps as before. The main material of these blocks are the framing material, 
which in this case are the oak planks. The supporting material is the centre material of the recipe, which are the paper extra blocks. The framing type is double crossed, which is just one of the variations that will be generated. On the cutter, the first slot is where the main framing material will go, which in our case is the oak planks, with the second supporting centre slot being where the paper extra will then go. The double crossed typing will be generated on top of the list of craftable blocks. Within the summer's crafting grid, input 1 will be the main framing material of oak planks, and input 2 will be the supporting centre of paper extra. The double crossed framed paper extra blocks will then be within that list to teach to the sawmill. Now I am hoping that this has made a little bit of sense to those like myself who are still a bit confused whenever it comes to the architect's cutter and the input slots within the sawmill's interface. As long as you can remember that slot 1 and input 1 are for the same main material of the recipe, Slot 2 and input 2 are for the supporting material of the recipe and slot 3 and input 3 are for the covering material then you should be good to make and teach these recipes with ease. If not, well, trial and error is still a fine way to get these recipes that you want. Just change the position of these blocks within the slots and inputs until it eventually works for you. Keep a note of the recipes nearby to make it easier on your remembering as well. Although this is a tutorial dedicated to the Mine Colonies mod, I am now going to briefly discuss another incredibly useful mod that I highly recommend you install, and that is the Just Enough Items mod. This mod works extremely well with Mine Colonies and can be used to help input recipes into the sawmill's crafting grid. You can use JEI to automatically populate a crafting grid for yourself or within a building to make crafting or teaching recipes easier. To input recipes into a crafting grid using JEI, you would first need to open up the crafting grid within the building that you're trying to teach the recipe to. You would then select the item that you want to teach from the JEI list which will normally open up a crafting recipe for the item. There will be a grey button beside the recipe, which, if you press, will automatically populate all of the items required for the recipe into the crafting grid. Another use for JEI is that you can drag blocks over from the search box directly into the crafting grid without needing the block within your inventory at all. Normally, to teach a standard 3x3 recipe, you would need to have all of the items required for the recipe within your inventory and then drag them up into the grid to create the recipe pattern. But with JEI, it is far easier as you can just simply search for the item, then drag it over without actually needing the item within your inventory. A final use for JEI, then I'll stop going on about it, is that you could use it to see what type of items can be crafted by a specific Mine Colony building. If you select an item within the JEI search bar, it will bring up the crafting recipe for the item and it may have some different tabs on the top ribbon of it. Normally, one of those tabs will include an image of a Mine Colony building hut, which symbolises that that particular build can learn the recipe of the chosen item. This is a fairly easy way to see if a building can learn the recipe of an item that you wish to teach. The front page of the sawmill's interface will show the name of the hut and its upgrade level unless you have renamed the build. You can also see the carpenter assigned to work at the build here as well. Through the manage workers option, you can assign and unassign a carpenter to the build. You can recall the carpenter to their hut by pressing the recall worker option. The build options will show what is required to upgrade the hut, as well as options to repair or deconstruct it. Pickup priority will determine how much of an effort that your couriers will make to come collect items from the hut. A higher priority level means that couriers will make more of an effort to come collect more frequently. 
You can also force couriers to collect items immediately by clicking the Request Pick Up Now option. The Inventory button will show you what type of items are in the building storage, with the chest icon beside it, allowing you to search for a specific item. The Crafting Recipes tab will show you a list of all of the standard 3x3 taught recipes already taught to the sawmill. At the top of the page, you can see how many recipe slots are being used and are currently available. The arrows to the side of a recipe will allow you to assign a crafting priority to a specific recipe. A recipe that is higher on the list will have a higher priority to be crafted over a recipe that is lower on the list. Just as an example, let's say that you have taught the sawmill how to make chests in two different ways, by using all oak planks or by using all birch planks. If the oak planks recipe was higher in the list than the birch planks, then the carpenter would craft the chests using the oak planks because it has more priority. You could change the order around if you wanted them to craft using birch planks instead. These arrows are really only useful for when you have the warehouse master research unlocked within the university, which grants builds a different way to manage how they craft items. I'll not go into too much detail about that research during this tutorial, but it's always a good to know thing, that's why those arrows are there. The other two buttons on a recipe, within the list of recipes, will allow you to remove a taught recipe should you wish, or disable it so the carpenter will not craft the recipe. The Custom Recipes tab will show you a list of all of the architect cutter recipes taught to the sawmill. The buttons on the recipes work identically as previously discussed. This tab will not be available in versions 1.16 of Mine Colonies, as it does not support the Domum Ornamental mod for custom architect cutter recipes. The Tasks tab will show a list of any current requests that the carpenter is currently working on, as well as details as to where the crafted item will be delivered to. The Final Settings tab will be blank until the Warehouse Master research has been unlocked within the university. Once unlocked, you can set if your carpenter will craft recipes based upon its priority within the list of recipes, or if they will craft the recipes based upon the stock levels within the warehouse. And that is everything that you'll ever need to know about the carpenter and sawmill. This is a building that I cannot recommend more that you make a push on constructing to begin the production automation process for your colony. It will really save you so much time whenever these idiots start requesting in lots of wooden items, because trust me, they do ask for a lot. Thank you all so much for watching. If this tutorial has been helpful to you at all, please do let me know, and subscribe to the channel as well for more Mine Colonies content. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you in the next one.